Hey, and welcome to an episode of the Girl Boss Method podcast. I'm your roast. Your <laughs> I am your host, Richie Bra. Well, I'm already thinking about food. Hey, tonight <laughs> it's uh, it's a Monday night actually. So here today on the program, we've got two of the ladies joining us. So we have uh, Naima and Sagathri, and so throughout, I'll ask them a couple of questions and things. And yeah, we're going to dive into this week's topic, which is all about winter fitness. So managing expectations, goals and motivation, because unfortunately, this time of year, we do kind of experience um, a dip in that motivation as well. And it can feel quite daunting, especially if it's the first time that you're on a fitness program as well. And like if you're listening to this and you're not on a fitness program um, I think there are some definitely there's some value in this topic in helping you know just work through the mindset of it all as well and the management as well so some common issues that we might experience in winter so just for clarity today is the 30th of October and I believe in about two days time we actually officially go into the winter months November oh just no we're still in autumn it's December January February which is winter but I mean here in the UK it definitely gets cold enough in November so yeah let's say that it's say that it's still relevant okay so when we're thinking about issues that we may encounter when the um when it gets colder we've actually just had our daylight saving hours have just come through to, like literally yesterday we've we've had an extra hour of sleep on our Sunday and now things are darker so when you ladies get back from work and it's time to take a trip down to the gym it's darker and even when you get up in the morning and you want to go to the gym it's darker so yeah that isn't very motivating and actually this evening um I had my gym session later today and I traveled in the dark and sometimes we can get a little bit worried about walking around in the dark as well and it's unfortunate that we feel like that but it's you know there's all sorts of dangers that that lurk um I'll promise not to go off topic here, but I did cycle anyway so that was a win for me and it was actually really good nice to change up activity. Right. So firstly, some of the common issues that we encounter, reduced uh, physical activity. And generally, this is with the colder weather. Um, it can kind of discourage us in terms of getting outdoors for activity. So um, my gym that I go to um, is a 20 to 30 minute walk. And in the winter, when the weather's shit and it's cold and it's wet and yeah it's just horrible and it's dark I I might be more inclined to drive so I mean ladies is that something that you found is is off, off putting for you when it gets dark like do you find that you you do actually reduce your physical activity yeah, yeah with walking definitely yeah but um, my gym is across the road, as you know, so I don't really. Yeah, you're not going to have a problem getting there. You, you yeah. <laughs> so go through. How about for yourself? Um, so I've got a dog. Definitely guilty that I've been taking him out less in terms of walking as well because it's getting quite dark. And yeah. I don't after work. It's just like, oh, do I really have to go? Kind of feeling. Yeah, um, and gym wise, I have to drive anyway. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, of course. So yeah, I guess fair enough, really. Um, but yeah, it's you know overall we're going to have that decrease in physical activity, which again, this is going to start adding to that sedentary behaviour that we might associate or say that contributes to sort of seasonal weight gain. Um, so unfortunately, this time of year is is gen generally when we start to reduce our physical activity 
And as a result, you know, our energy expenditure is going to be less. And as a result, we might be more inclined to put on weight. And apparently year on year, it's this time of year that it tends to happen or weight gain tends to happen. Because I guess January, everyone's motivated. They've got new goals. They've got, uh, you know, New Year's resolutions, etc. There's you know, the uh, the idea that the holiday season or the risk of overindulgent, etc. Um, you've got new motivations, really. So kind of heading on to that, I'll just kind of list um, these ones as well, just so we can kind of get into uh, some more on the topic as well. But yeah, holiday overindulgence. So obviously, we're going to be inclined to have uh, more calorie rich fruit foods, uh, maybe even sweets as well. We've got Halloween tomorrow. So, you know, if you're someone that kind of like thinks, well, this is a good excuse to or a good occasion to to kind of have Halloween treats um, for some of us, there might be Diwali ce- celebrations and things coming up as well. And that can quite often, you know, add to the overeating and, and the gatherings and the, and the parties and that sort of thing. Uh, again, with the colder weather, um, we kind of start to crave more comfort foods, uh, more calorie dense foods. Um, So we are thinking about, you know, rich soups and stews and and baked goods, baked sweet goods as well. And again, these things can be higher in calories and and again, contribute. Um, Reduce daylight, reduce daylight. We've already kind of said we're less inclined to get outdoors and to walk um this is something that people do experience seasonal affective disorder as well um so again it's just sort of thinking about how that how that can affect your motivation as well especially if you are someone that is affected by it as well um and again yeah social family pressure friends and events and work dues and all those sorts of gathering opportunities uh maybe even some stress and some some emotional eating uh so again for people that might have uh more stresses around this time of year with when it comes to work or even family if you've got children as well so all the uh, the pressure of the the school uh, the school activities the uh, trying to get everything done before christmas um, they can all add to stress as well. And then just again, general lack of motivation, that cold, dark, dreary weather can reduce your motivation for physical activity. Um, and then also that hibernation mentality. Have you guy- girls experienced that sort of mindset, would you say, in, in winter months previously? Yeah, definitely. You just want to sleep early or like not wake up early or get on with things you just want to kind of stay in bed and things like that so Mm. definitely more duvet days exactly (laughs) Mm. yeah so yeah just again you're going to feel like you said less motivated and then the kind of norms around seasonal weight gain so again just adding in um, maybe even anticipating that weight gain as well. You might think, oh, well, it's that time of year. It's just, just going to happen and almost accepting that. And that in itself can be like a self-fulfilling prophecy. So I'll come out of the doom and gloom of that all. So the first thing that we want to do, and I think which is a really good idea, is actually set realistic winter goals. So when we're thinking about that for us on this program we're thinking about fitness we're thinking about nutrition we're thinking about movement in general maybe activities as well so I've kind of come up with a couple of things that we can do right so things we can do for exercise and activity so firstly I do talk about this a lot because I would probably say that previous years I wasn't really a fan of walking and I think when I started driving it was like just relying on my my car all the time to take me places take me to the gym or take me wherever from A to B and you know you almost become a bit of a hermit in the the winter um 
But in recent years, uh, because I've become a fan of walking, although I hate dark, wet weather, I've gone and invested in things like hiking boots. Uh, I've got a rain rain jacket. I've got brollies. I've got hats and scarves and gloves, like all the stuff that, that that's going to kind of it's I've got no other choice or no excuse really, but other than to get out and walk because I've got all the stuff that's going to kind of keep me going or keep me warm. And, and um, yeah, that it's interesting, but I think getting out for a walk in this sort of weather, it's very rewarding because you feel that wind hit your face. You feel your body warm up. You feel, you know, Firstly, when you get out, you're more likely to walk faster than you are in the summer because you're trying to keep yourself warm. So actually, it's such a good, good way of of like, you know, layer, layering up. And actually, when I get out for a walk, quite often I've got too many layers on and they end up coming off. But yeah, I just think you've got to get more comfortable with that uncomfortable feeling. Um, second to that, tracking our progress. So, yes, we've got the wonderful Girl Boss Method app and in there, we can track our activities and any additional track activities we do. We can track our workouts. So that's going to help you keep on top of maintaining like that progress and having that sense of achievement. Um, staying active in within festive activities as well. So things like ice skating, shopping, hikes, maybe even dancing as well with, with friends. So, yeah, I think... When it comes to socializing, it's looking at other ways of socializing other than just kind of reverting to sitting down and perhaps maybe just eating or just drinking and having it all very centered around that. And look, there's time and space for that. But when you're catching up with a friend and you you just want to catch up with them in the middle of the, the day, so it's a Saturday afternoon, Sunday afternoon at the weekend, why not get out, grab a coffee and just go for a walk and, and have your catch up? We love to natter. So rather than sit and do it, have your coffees to go and then just get get out. So it's like creating more like, you know, easier ways of, of uh, creating that opportunity for movement. And then again, just regular exercise. So, you know, again, even short workouts are going to help. You girls have got access to short mini workouts as well that you can do, uh, you know, in between work. So you can just jump on the app and you'll find um, a, I've create I can create some more as well. But small little bits of activity that you can do that don't require any exercise equipment. So, you know, if you are at home or you just want to like get down and do like 10 minutes of of something, whether it's you know, some squats and some uh, assisted, you know, um, incline push-ups or um, what, whatever it is, just some activity to try and keep that blood flow going, just keep that activity level up and just keep feeling good as well. The more that we sit and stay sedentary, the less inclined we are going to be to move and walk. So coming up, we are going to talk a little bit more about the things we can do for nutrition okay sorry bear with me i'm just having a problem with these slides all right i've got one of those slides on right now which sort of bounces as as you Oh my word. <laughs> oh, this is brilliant. Brilliant. All right. I'm going to take my hands off right now and let, let's let's let the bounce occur. And then we'll come down. Right. Yay. Okay, perfect. Okay. <laughs> Things we can do for nutrition. And all right. I think I might have to be prepped for this because this might happen on every slide that we click through. Um so yes, mindful eating. So be being conscious of what you're eating, uh, paying attention to things like portion sizes, avoiding snacking, like just go for, for heartier meals, you know? Um, yeah. And again, slowing, eating slowly. There's actually, I don't know if you've ever tried this, um, 
but just I don't know if you've read this either but I think ideally we should be chewing each mouthful like 32 times or something and admittedly I tried it out in lockdown and I was horrendously full I was like whoa okay like I wanted to eat more but I was just so full just purely by by chewing um so all that mastication you know you start to release digestive enzymes and and you know fullness hormones and god knows what um yeah that is actually a really good tip and also I think we've talked about this before but avoiding the snacking whilst you're working or whilst you're not having your meals in front of the telly and things like that they can help so actually really being present um in terms of when you are eating is going to help you as well and really savoring your meals um and another thing this time of year i think it's very important for us to realize whether or not going through a diet or a you know a, a calorie deficit is really worth it and so what i mean by that and I don't condone it by any means, any extreme dieting or crash diets or anything like that. I really do try and encourage you ladies to, you know, adopt good, healthy eating habits. Um, yes, we need to think mindfully about our goals and what they are, especially when we are thinking about a calorie deficit. But there will be times when and periods, and it's important, especially if we are on that fat loss or weight loss journey, understanding when we just actually need to, to be at maintenance. Um, I did actually record a topic earlier about the maintenance phase. And I think it's really important that we do ask ourselves, realistically, is this a time to just constantly be on in this deficit? And there is definitely something in being able to eat at maintenance especially when it comes to to going out and things um i think when we start to heavily heavily restrict we run the risk of overindulging so there's the you know we don't want to be in this in this mindset of going okay oh i need to undo i need to undo what i've done um, we want to kind of look if we've had some blips in there, we want to smooth sail. And there will come times, ladies, on your journey where maybe it's more about having that accountability and maybe even not tracking for a small short period. I know, Naima, when you went on holiday earlier this year, when well, actually when we started together, we did go through some time off from actually tracking um, another one of the girls did that recently um, and and actually she had some great progress just by not even doing doing that the heavy heavy tracking so it's just you know again work with me we're, we're when we're when we're working together one-to-one -one, these are the conversations that we can have together about your journey as well so it's just really just being mindful on that as well um yeah so we want to think about you know I'm going to give you a couple of strategies here as well when it comes to your nutrition and um I'll kind of get into that just um shortly as we sort of when, as we come towards the end and close this topic as well but yeah planning your meals in advance it takes the the thought out of it when when we're like hungry and we're cold you're more likely to just grab the closest nearest thing to you so we really want to think about you know that that balance of um lean protein vegetables you know whole grains that sort of thing and now let's just check that i can actually skip forward again so bear with me we'll wait for the bounce of the i need to take this bounce away from our slides <laughs> it always looks cool when i'm making it but is it always there in practice okay so we've got a little bit more on the nutrition side so again yes we talked about opting for foods that are, are rich in nutrients and fiber so we want our fruits our vegetables our whole, whole grains you know our, our protein sources as well these are going to help you feel fuller for longer hydration comes under nutrition as well you want to make sure that um you know you are it's easy to mistake thirst for hunger. You want to make sure that you are drinking enough water, even in the cold weather. It's important to stay hydrated. We're going to stop 
things like all the, you know, the dry skin and the the chap lips, et cetera, you want to make sure that you are thinking about hydration. It's not just for when you feel thirsty or when you think you feel thirsty. Again, when we're thinking about um, sugary drinks or even high calorie drinks and stuff like that, I think, again, this is like a small, like a, a very easy win an easy win in the sense that if you are somebody that likes very high calorie drinks, there are ways of choosing alternatives. So for example, hot chocolate, we love a good old hot chocolate. Um, so again, like a, like a nice little hack. I don't know if you guys have seen the sweet freedom syrups before. They're really actually quite low calorie. Um, I can, cigar free have you seen them before little suits no freedom it's a low calorie chocolate alternative and look it's not to say that you need to do that every time but it's just an option if you know that you you um you you know it's coming towards the end of the day and you you are um already sort of at your calorie intake you know whatever that it's just a nice way of kind of getting something sweet in that is low calorie. And, you know, there are other things uh, that we can have. Uh, so you've got like things like chicory, uh, chicory. Have you seen, have you heard of that? Chicory is like a caffeine alternative as well to have at, in the evening, um, herbal teas as well. And then, yeah, when we're thinking about the holiday season, treating things that, you know, in moderation still have those things. Don't restrict yourself, but just be mindful about those things. Um, and then, yeah, just making sure that, you know, in your kitchen, you're we're always prepped and, and ready to go. So you've got like, you know, healthy snacks. So, so be it, you know, nuts, yogurts, cut up vegetables, protein, protein sources on hand as well. Um, and that sort of thing. Okay. What thing, what things can we do? Things we can do for like the mindset and and the 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 mental well being and that sort of thing. So we touched on it briefly at the beginning, but set realistic goals. So be realistic about your weight management goals during the holiday season. Instead of making that focus just purely on weight loss, there's definitely some benefit in thinking about maintaining as well. This doesn't have to be over the whole winter season. This is this could be for for a week. We could look at maintenance, especially if we're having uh, we're finding that, especially when it comes to our menstrual cycle as well and how we feel around then. There's definitely some value in eating at maintenance at different. uh, Yeah, different intervals of of that monthly cycle, and that's going to differ from each of you. Some people tend to want more calories or need more you know, nourishment, like prior to, to um, your having your actual period and, and others, they might find that actually on their period, they want to eat more. And believe it or not, there are some people that don't want to eat at all during their period. So it just really is very specific to you as an individual. So it's really important to in terms of understanding your menstrual cycle in your own way as well. Um, ladies, I don't know if I've mentioned it, but I'm actually on a an all day seminar on the second or third week of November. I'm doing a full day seminar with uh, the nutrition um, organization I did my qualification with. Um, it's all about the menstrual cycle, training and nutrition, also uh, touching on menopause as well. Um, so, yeah, I definitely really look forward to adding some more information whenever I learn on that course just bringing it back to you girls as well stress management we have got a whole training on stress management within the on-demand section on one of the, the you know there's a video on stress management and sleep as well sleep can disrupt your hunger hormones again um consistency is key it sounds so repetitive but you know at the end of the day just sticking to your non-negotiables and I don't feel like we've talked about this enough but always knowing that every week there are like three non-negotiables so if that's new to you you want to think about three steps or three things that you are going to ensure that you stick to for the week so today's Monday for example for myself 
I might say that my non-negotiables are I get out and go for a walk absolutely every single day, whether that's I get time for a long one or it's only a short one. I get out and be active in some way. And then I say to myself, right, I must go to the gym three to four times this week. Or maybe I might say, I need to make sure I hit my protein target. So even if my calories are not completely, my deficits not completely adhere to, I really try and focus on that protein number as well. So there are different things that you girls can take on board in terms of creating your own non-negotiables. Um, rewarding yourself as well over this period, over winter is quite fun. So that doesn't always have to relate to something like a reward related to food. We want to think more of a reward that when we win something, there's a way that we celebrate. So, you know, whether that's like sharing that with your friends, with your family, you know, may maybe even thinking, do you know what? I've gone through this really hard period. I'm going to be kind to myself and you know, maybe have a chat with me. Maybe we look at, you know, other ways of of trying to create that reward element for you as well. Okay, so we're coming on to sort of more of the, the actionable things that we could do right now and here and right now, really. So um, visualization and, and goal setting. So we're thinking about that. Um, thinking about what you want to do over the the next three to four months, sort of as we come out of autumn, we go in towards winter. Maybe there are some mini goals that you would like to achieve before Christmas. Um, maybe there are some periods where you feel like you you might have time away from certain aspects of the program in terms of. You know, we might, again, we talked about maybe having a maintenance phase or a maintenance mindset just to help take away any added stresses as well. Um, but when we're thinking about that visualization, uh, you know, this is something in practice you can do. You can just write these things down and and maybe, again, this relates back to the non-negotiables that we talk ourselves or talk, talk, talk to ourselves about. Yeah. And then positive affirmations. So things that you genuinely feel that you are grateful for or happy for, but also may, well, that's more related to gratitude, sorry, but the positive affirmations would be things that you are intentional about. So although you're not there right now, these are things that you want to say to yourself in order to reinforce that positive mindset. So again, for example, I can... I know that I'm going to find joy in getting out for walks during the colder months. And I know that I'm capable of, of maintaining a healthy mindset around uh, nutrition and activity during the holiday period. Um, again, we can start thinking about maybe even having a goal tracker. This, again, might feed into that gratitude journal as well. These things all sort of tie into each other. So it's just about creating some visuals for yourself getting a book writing things down expressing how you feel whether that's that sadness or joy in it during this period and uh, you know the hard times that that might occur as well um but yeah and again just finding that that positive reinforcement so just finding the ways to reward yourself in terms of reaching milestones and sort of you know um yeah just things that might align to your interests. So it could be like, you know what, if I sort of, you know, this thing has happened, maybe I might go reward myself or we might go and do an activity together with my partner or my, or my friend or my sister, you know, there's different things that we can kind of look at, at that really. So I'm going to leave that there for now. And one last thing I wanted to talk to you about, because I thought this might be quite, there's some value in this as well. And I thought, you know, that I love creating, <clears throat> do I love? <laughs> I'm, I'm uh, committed to creating like um, eBooks or even recipes and things like that. So I wanted to kind of talk to you about some examples that we might think of uh, like the winter warmers. Um, so 
I also ask you, would you find that beneficial knowing that there are some some like nice, warm, hot foods, hot pots, um, things that that you can have at this time of year? Would that be helpful? Yeah, definitely. I always like um in the winter like get the crock pot out and do like slow cooker meals. Mm. <clears throat> yeah. That sounds brilliant. And cigar free for yourself? Yeah, definitely. It'd be really helpful. Yeah. I think the crock pot and the slow cooker meals, you cannot go wrong with doing like you know, like a vegan chili. So just having some beans in there. So adding like, you know, butternut squash and, you know, things like chickpea curries. And, you know, there's so many ways that we can make these meals like fun as well with with flavors and, and hot food as well. So, um, yeah, and, and lentils as well. So dals and, and things like that are really lovely this time of year. Um, yeah, and another thing that I do, I kind of eat the same thing for days in a row. It's a, I don't know. It's, it's just, maybe it's an obsession that's kicked in. It's a, it stops me wasting food because um, yeah, food wastage, you know, we, we, it's really good financially and also just ethically as well. Just thinking about uh, the food that we buy, we don't want it to go to waste. We want to try and, you know, make sure that we are using everything that we buy. So there's no harm in eating the same meal two, three days in a row. It's absolutely fine. And all buying the ingredients. And even if it means you, you only like cooking fresh food, but you eat the same thing for three meals, you know, I know that doesn't work for everyone. Um, th- you know, things like people that you live with, be it family or or like housemates and stuff. I know that can have a fe- an effect on on your meals every night, but that's just maybe even having that continuity or that consistency with your lunch lunches, for example. Um, one of my favorites. Um, again, if you, so, Gathri, I know you don't follow me on Instagram, but Naima does. I'm I'm not sure how long you followed me for, but last year. I was like just heavy on seitan, potatoes, carrots, parsnips, greens with gravy. And it was just, that would be my last meal of the day. And I would just look forward to it. And it doesn't have to be something, we think of like roast dinners as being like really highly calorific, but there are ways of making it fit, you know, in terms of, you know, making it, um, more of a yeah like a lower calorie meal like not massively low of course I get that but again just coming to that whole thing of not restricting ourselves but just thinking about how we cook things so quite often you know like things like potatoes you can put them in the air fryer and you can put like nothing on them you can boil them as well um you can bake them in the oven and and maybe even just use like low calorie um spray oils and things and obviously because traditionally people would when they're thinking about roast and why it becomes so highly calorific is they you know they start adding in lots of uh you know oils and butters and you know lots of grease to to those foods so again it's just being mindful in terms of how we cook our dinners um as well that can like have you know an effect as well in terms of those excessive calories believe it or not just a pop question how many calories in a tablespoon of of olive oil 124 or something 100 (laughs) yeah pretty much yeah it's shocking isn't it and you think you know look I know for those of you listening, you cannot see us, but we are all women here that are of South Asian origin. Um, and culturally, we, you know, our our parents, our like, you know, our mums, our grands, they would have cooked with insane amounts of of ghee and and like oils and and butters and things like that. And, you know, these things that you don't because you can't see oil when you pour it in in your on your food you think think that it's nothing but it's a game changer when you actually have a look at how much we're having so it's just again something to be mindful of 
Um, but yes, for those of you that have been listening, ladies are going to hang around for a couple of minutes. Um, I promise not to take too much of your the rest of your evening up. Um, if you have been listening to the podcast and you want to reach out and find out a little bit more about the Girl Boss Method, or perhaps you want some advice or you want to suggest a topic as well, then you can find me on Instagram at Richu Bra. I will spell that out for you as I always do. R-I-C-H-U-B-R-A-R. And thank you so much for joining us today. And hopefully we see you together again on another episode.